My name is Ellie Attica Carlson. I'm with the Network for the Elimination of Police Violence in Toronto, and we're here to rally the Toronto Police Services Board meeting protesting the rampant use of carding in communities across the city. We need more people coming out. Those that are affected by this the most are afraid to come out. And so, I'm not afraid to come out. We're here, not begging for justice from the forces behind us, but to serve notice that we are going to start organizing in our communities to fight police violence. So, one of the fundamental things I think that we need to do is to develop this critical consciousness of the nature of police in an oppressive society. At this time, Canadian, the trust of Canadians in the police has declined because of the outrageous acts of police violence that we have witnessed in the media. We've seen the police killing the Vancouver airport. We've seen the massive police violence here in Toronto during the G20 summit. We've seen the RCMP police officers sexually harassing their colleagues and there have been numerous instances of police violence across this country that has inspired Canadians distrust or lack of trust in um, police. What we need to do is to organize that sentiment, that current state of affairs into a permanent mindset that will lead to people not believing the police. When that takes place, we will, we will see jurors refusing to send off working class people, especially working class racialized and indigenous peace people, into the prison industrial complex. Because in this country called Canada, African people and the indigenous people are overrepresented, and there's a reason for that. It has, has much to do with the operation of um, capitalism in the society as well as racism, white supremacy. It must come to an end and we will continue to make sure we're here, our voices are heard, our actions are felt to stop this kind of behavior. The so-called mediated talks on the issue of carding, black residents and other racialized and poor people throughout the 18 divisions in the Toronto is corrupt. That's why it is corrupt. The police purport they want to improve their relationship with the black community, yet there is zero transparency. There is zero involvement and engagement. The issue of illegal searches and strip searches that take place daily, and the police board can't even get its minutes right. We have to understand their fundamental nature and their fundamental role in this society. And precisely because we do live in an exploitative and racist uh, society, we, we correspondingly have a police force that enforces the needs of the ruling class in that society. And so we deal, of course, with, at this time, an escalation in the violence of the police precisely because as an agency of social control in a period of austerity and in a period of growing poverty and despair the need for them and the need for their violence becomes greater than ever and that's exactly why we're dealing with a heightened crisis in communities that's why we're dealing with a situation, particularly in poor racialized communities, where the level of harassment is creating a tinderbox within communities, where people are being driven to the limits of their endurance, where there are people in communities who simply don't leave their homes unless they absolutely have to because they know they're going to be interacting with the police, they're going to face their harassment, they're going to face their persecution. That's right. The answer is for communities to organize in the face of it and to push back. Yes. Not, this seems to me the orientation, the perspective that's here today, and that's why I stand in solidarity with this initiative. It's not about liberal fuzziness, it's about community resistance, the only thing that make a difference. Thanks very What we are doing here today is so important because despite the fact that there is a meeting in there and we have police service board representatives inside making decisions on policing practices that are going to influence what's going on in our community, we live there and we live with those decisions. We experience those every single day 
and our voices are so important out here because we need to show them that we are here, that we see them, and that we are here to critique what they are doing. We have a voice in this.